Good morning, everybody. Today we are reading in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And we're reading a, a, a very well-known story, one that my parents used to read me when I was a little boy. And I still love it today, the story of, of David and Goliath, how, how God enabled David with just a few small stones and a slingshot to take down the, the mammoth uh, giant Goliath. And uh, most of us know the story, but there's a couple verses that really stuck out to me this time, and I just want to draw your attention to them. First of all, remember the story how David comes and sees Goliath for the very first time when he's bringing lunch, basically, to his brothers who are in the Israel army. And uh, as he gets there, he sees right away that the army is discouraged. They are feeling hopeless. And uh, David, in fact, uh, goes to King Saul, and uh, there's something about the situation that, that David just knows, that this is not a hopeless situation. In verse 32, he says to Saul, he says, don't worry about this Philistine, David said, uh, I'll go fight him. And in fact, there's a better translation, probably a more accurate translation, that says, let no one lose heart over this Philistine. I think that phrase, lose heart, is probably uh, it, the one that struck me that may, it was most descriptive. I, I, David saw that this group had lost heart and 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 uh, I'm thinking about what it really means to lose heart. I mean sports teams lose heart when they get so far behind that, that they just go through the motions that they don't even try to try to go after a win any, anymore. And I think you and I have probably been in a situation where we have lost heart before. Sometimes the circumstances that we're in become so overwhelming that that uh, we swallow perhaps the most damaging lie that could ever be that we could ever believe, and is that is that our future is hopeless? There's nothing we can do, and certainly that's the situation. They had lost hope. You know, losing heart is based on a belief, a false belief, that there, that there is nothing we can do, that there, there's no hope. Saul, in verse 33, actually tries to convince David of that. He says, don't be ridiculous. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy. And he, he's been a man of war since his youth. And uh, we can believe those lies and they can produce fear and negativity and cynicism and all sorts of, as Zig Ziglar used to say, stinking thinking in our life. And then that just sort of multiplies and it just paralyzes us. And it, it appears that the, that the whole Israel army had, had bought this particular lie. But David shows us that there's an alternative. And that's what J David chose. And that's what we can choose too when we're faced with the Goliaths of our life. Verse 37, David said to Saul, he said, The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. You see, God and David had been together for a, a long time, even in David's short number of years. And David was a shepherd, and David had grown, with God's help, a, a hope-filled, bold heart. And there's a misconception, though, that, that you can face a Goliath moment in your life and just sort of manufacture a, a, a hope-filled, bold heart out of the blue. No, it's something that God and you grow together over time. It's a journey in trust, and it's a together thing. Now, when you read the entire chapter, you find out that God and David had spent a lot of time together when he was a shepherd, and there were some everyday shepherd moments that had prepared him for eventually for, for this Goliath moment. The key was not David's boldness, though. The key was his confidence and his conviction that God was going to do something amazing. We read in verse 45, he said, uh, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you. David did not ignore the circumstances. He knew that Goliath was big, but he chose to trust instead. Instead of allowing the, the giant to shut him down, he continued to keep his eyes straight on the Lord. He is working in his time 
in his way. And don't lose heart. God wants to grow a hope-filled heart inside of each of us. And little by little, every day, as we trust him in the everyday moments, we'll be ready then for those Goliath moments that we, that we face. I pray that you go out and have a, an, an everyday sort of trusting day and an amazing day of trusting God so that when those Goliath moments come, that you'll be ready to trust him even then. Have a great day. If these devotional videos are helpful to you, subscribe to our channel and click the notification button so you know when we post a new video. And of course, please share them with others.